Welcome everyone to uh, today's live session. Today, I am very pleased to say I am joined by Pascal Bonnet. Hi, Pascal. Hello, Bernard. I'm so I'm so so excited to talk about intelligent automation. So you have just co-authored a brand new book uh, called uh, Intelligent Automation. Uh, welcome to the world of hyper automation. And this is what we will be talking about in today's session. Um, what what um, this intelligent automation is, what sort of technologies are driving it, how organizations and what organizations are doing this really well. Um, and um, and hopefully get all your your insights um, from from you. Um, at the same time, as always, this is live. So anyone watching, please say hello. We've just said had Zara from Azerbaijan um, joining in. So it's really good to see you. Uh, so let us know where you're from. Nahed from Kuwait. So it's very interesting. Um, we usually have people all over the world joining in. And also make sure that you have, if you have any comments or any questions, like always let us know. Uh, Kute from Canada just joined. Um, let me just pull a few people in here. Hello. Um, we've got Mailu from Nairobi. Wow. We've got Ivana from Italy. They're all coming in. Um, we have... Um, Cairo or Kiro, um, Kayo from, from London. Basically, it's lovely to see you all on the stream, literally from, from all across the world. Um, we've got Frederick, I can't even keep up. We've got, got um, from Arizona in the US, Don, welcome. So as I said, um, these these sessions are really for, for you and um, Make sure you ask questions, you say hello, you engage with us. Um, Pascal is someone that knows this industry inside out. You've just left McKinsey where you set up, which which department did you set up there? The, the, the automation? AI, AI and automation uh, uh, service line. Very and good. I, and I did the same before for, for EY, uh, Ernst & Young. Very good, for Ernst & Young, so EY, perfect. Very good. So you have a lot of experience. Um, so first of all, how, how are you? How has this crazy year been for you? <laughs> you are based in in France. Where, where in France are you at the moment? Uh, currently close to Lyon. Lyon Very in, good. Uh, and, and France is pretty, pretty badly affected at the moment by, by mm -hmm. a second wave. So, so how, how, how are things for you? Uh, not, not, not too bad. And I would say very, very busy because of it, because of the, because of the crisis. And what keeps you busy? Uh, oh, <laughs> um, intelligent automation uh, is, is more and more required in these times of, of um, remote work, uh, remote uh, connection with clients. So a lot of companies are, are asking and requiring, uh, demanding for for intelligent automation, for more intelligent automation in their businesses. So I'm, I'm used to, to, to give the, the quote from uh, Ilan Oshry, uh, a professor in um, the University of Auckland. He said uh, a few months ago already, COVID-19 has achieved in six to eight weeks what evangelists of automation have not managed to do for more than five years. Mm -hmm. So this shows that despite the bad aspects of COVID-19 that we all know, COVID-19 is pushing uh, companies, uh, businesses to more, to more intelligent automation. And not only businesses, but also, also hospitals. I mean, all our health system um, can be more resilient thanks to, to intelligent automation. Yeah, very good. And this is this is exactly what I'm seeing. I I don't think I have ever been busier in my entire life. I and I also feel I, I, I am more productive than ever because I can actually concentrate on things. I don't lose as, as much time um, on things like travel and, and aeroplanes and airports. Um, same, same here, same here. Yes. So you can hear my dog in the background. I've got some <laughs> parcel at the door. So I, th uh, I think the, the level of demand has 
increased by 30 to 50 or 70 percent, depending on, on, on the area. Mm. But you know, while, while intelligent automation used to be a, a factor of competitiveness before the crisis, uh, where the companies which had implemented it were able to gain market share by selling cheaper and better products. Uh, mm. With the current crisis, it has become a factor of, of survival. Okay, when, uh, the companies which are not digitalized and automated enough uh, can't, can't really survive in our new world. Uh, companies, uh, those companies can't sell products and services online. They can't collect their cash. They can't motivate their employees remotely. Um, and uh, and managing operations remotely with minimal human intervention is is currently the the holy grail. Absolutely. So maybe you can tell us a little bit more about yourself, just a little bit of a background, so people get more of an, an idea of who uh, Pascal Bonnet is. Um, what, what has been your 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 career so far, and and where are you today, and where where are you going tomorrow? <laughs> so, so I'm I'm I'm, I'm an expert, a pioneer in the field of intelligent automation. Um, this field started about about 10 years ago with what we we call robotic process automation uh, and and this field has climbed the intelligent ladder to, to to what we call intelligent automation today okay i'll i'll, I'll talk more about what it is and and uh, later on if 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 you're happy with that um uh, as you said before, I'm, I'm bringing 20 plus years of experience in digital transformation, and especially I built the AI and automation practices for EY and McKinsey. Um, I'm, as you said, author of the first uh, reference book on, on intelligent automation, uh, hyper automation. Uh, happy that it, I mean, we, we launched it one month ago, happy to to see that, that it is really well received by the readers and uh, and it has been an Amazon bestseller for the last for the last month. So basically since since the launch. Uh, right. Besides this, I'm a member of the Forbes Technology Council. I'm also senior advisor for for many uh, uh, organizations like the Institute of Robotic Process Automation and Artificial Intelligence. And and I would say before all, I'm passionate about passionate about what technology can do for our world um, and, and passionate about what uh, artificial intelligence and automation can do to make our world more human. Okay, that's really what's, what is driving my energy on a day-to-day -day basis. Very good, and I, I think we are very, very well aligned there. Um, it, what made you write the book? Uh, good question. Um, I think first it's about sharing sharing a passion. Okay, this passion, this conviction that uh, we can build a better world uh, through the use of intelligent automation and technology in general. Secondly, um, I think it came from a necessity. Um, so I've, I've been uh, consulting and helping companies for 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 more than more, deca more than a decade in this field, and. Uh, whenever you you meet with a company, we, you meet with the CEO uh, to discuss intelligent automation, its benefits, and the way to implement it. Uh, it's it's always your voice or my voice, my experience, um, and and um, and I can bring some 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 of my peers or friends to to explain as well. But it has never been written, has never been uh, documented in 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 a specific. Um, uh, document that I can share with my clients, with my with with the CEOs I'm discussing with. So it's really about uh, having a support to inform and educate on what is intelligent automation, what it can bring to a company, how it can be implemented successfully, um, how how to make all this work, and and where to start, and so on and so on. And so, on. so it's really the answer to many questions that uh, we regularly have from from CEOs. Absolutely. Um, lots of really good comments, people saying great information. Um, um, what 
um, as, as always, anyone who is uh, listening this, uh, listening to this, you can always re-listen to all my previous conversations. I've spoken to many of the thought leaders in this space. You can re-watch this on my YouTube channel or you can listen to them on my podcast as well, just in case anyone misses any of the sessions. So let's dive into, into this then, uh, Pascal. If you were to define... Um, intelligent automation for me? What is it? Good question. Good points. Um, uh, first of all, I think it's it's one of the most recent trends in the broad field of artificial intelligence. Um, intelligent automation, we also call it hyper automation. You might also hear about cognitive automation. All, all those words mean the same thing. Mm. Um, it is simply a combination of methods and technologies involving people, organizations, uh, um, and, and technologies like machine learning, low-code platform, robotic process automation, and more. Okay, so it's and and this combination of methods and technologies is aimed at automating end-to-end -end business processes in a computerized environment. Okay. It, it delivers business outcome on behalf of the employees, uh, working hands in hands with people to deliver faster, better, cheaper services, improving significantly the experience of the employees and the customers. Okay. To, to give a bit more, more context here, um, this trend is not new and, and, and it, it it, it started uh, centuries ago. So the industrial revolution started 200 years ago, uh, automating, you know, the, what, what we call blue collar work uh, in the agricultural and the manufacturing industries. Uh, and, and they provided massive and structural benefits to our society, uh, the reduction of famine, uh, the increase of standards of living, and they relieved us from laborious manual work. Uh, intelligent automation is the this in the same trend. Instead of being the automation of blue collar, it's the automation of white collar work, what we call basically office work, which which represents today 80% of the job roles in the world. Uh, both of us, <laughs> Bernard, and I think most of you listening to us are uh, knowledge workers, uh, basically people working in the office, people using their brain to deliver value. Uh, in the opposite of using hands to deliver value as it used to be in the manufacturing uh, uh, industries. So anyone, lawyers, financial controllers, medical doctors, center, call center operators. Um, and and I'm, I'm deeply convinced, and my co-authors as well, that the impact of that intelligent automation will have on our world will be as significant as the impact of the previous industrial revolutions. Very much, very much. It's just started. It is just started. So again, uh, intelligent automation has only been coined three years ago by, by IEEE, which is the, 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 the standards, the, the, the body that, that creates the standards in, in, um, in, uh, in, in the, the computing world. Very good. And Roy was just commenting here saying, I love that, that AI and IA can can make our world more human. And, and I think this is a, is a great, great comment uh, that, you, that you made. So in, in, in your book, you, you claim that that intelligent automation will or may world a, a better place. Uh, it will save uh, lots of lives and so on. Maybe you can explain this in a bit more detail why you think it is good for us. Because whenever you talk about automation, people, ought, um, I, I think, very quickly become fearful about their jobs, about the impact of on the economy and so on. So why do you think it is a good thing? Yes. So so. Um... So on, on many dimensions, intelligent automation is bringing a lot to our world and it will bring more and more in the future. And it is all about us to, to push it to, 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 to a level that, that it will really impact our society with the best of it. 
Um, we have discussed a, a little bit in the introduction about the impact on, on companies uh, in, in this context of COVID-19, okay? Um, based on, on my experience, I've seen the, the, the efficiency gains in, in a company uh, being 20 to 60 percent. Okay, uh, thanks to intelligent automation. So that's that's an important point. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk now about the other dimensions, the other benefits of using intelligent automation, for example, uh, with employees. Um, and to start with, let's start with a fact. According to Gallup Research, okay, a research company, 85% of the, com the, the employees worldwide are not fulfilled by their work, okay? Because it, they think it's too manual, repetitive, and tedious. Um, and IA solves a large part of this issue by freeing up those employees from repetitive transactional tasks. So, for example, like keying in invoices in an accounting software uh, eight hours per day, uh, technology can do that. Intelligent automation can do that. And it helps to refocus those people on more value add activities, but also more exciting tasks. Uh, for example, the ones that involve insights, creativity, a connection with other people. And on top of that, it augments them, transforming them into superhumans, able to generate insights, for, for example, from millions of data in just a few seconds. Like, for example, identifying a tumor on an X-ray in just a few seconds. So that's that's for for the on the employee dimension. Mm. Now we can get into into as uh, to answer directly your question: How does it save life? Mm. Um, IA has the potential to save millions of lives per year by, by supporting clinical trials, uh, disease diagnosis, and avoiding medical errors. According to our research, it's 10 plus million of lives per year that, that we can save. Mm. Uh, in, in developing countries, it can reduce death from preventable causes. For example, it's, it's crazy to think that more than 1 million people die every year from uh, diarrhea. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, uh, uh, an, uh, a disease that has been on earth for so long and, and that we know how to solve, but we, we, we can't identify it and we can't, solve, we can't solve it on time. So people are still dying of that. Um, and and, and uh, one of the key reasons of this is the shortage in physicians globally. More than 4 million, we are missing more than 4 million physicians. Um, so IA helps to, to solve this issue by enabling remote di diagnosis. So for example, there is an, an application that I, I like very much. It, it is called Tissue Analytics. Uh, this is, I mean, available on iOS, uh, on, on Apple, and, uh, and, um, and Google Play as well. Uh, it's an app that instantly diagnoses chronic wounds, burns, or skin conditions just by taking a picture of it mm. from, 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 from a phone. Uh, so it, it gives access to anyone at any time, uh, anywhere, Mm. Uh, to to a doctor, to to the advice of a doctor. Yeah, I, I couldn't couldn't agree more. I, I think intelligent automation, in particular AI, will completely transform our world and hopefully make our world a better and more human place. This is always what what I'm trying to portray. I'm just having a look, quick look through the stream and some of the comments. Uh, Gabrielle is saying, "Happy Friday, greetings from New York." Or greetings back. Uh, we have Arlene saying greetings from Scotland. Good content on a Friday. Yes, thank you very much. Um, Doris is saying hello from Lebanon, and uh, Heba saying hello from Palestine, and Suman is saying happy Diwali to to everyone. The festival of light. Absolutely. Happy Diwali. Yeah, so I, we have lots of neighbors in the neighborhood. All the lights have gone up. It's lovely to see. So happy Diwali to anyone listening that is celebrating that. Um, there's a good question here from Tyrone saying, Pascal, how does intelligent automation 
connects to to the future industrial revolution because we've ha talked about three industrial revolution revolutions before um people like klaus schwab from the world economic forum talks about the fourth industrial revolution that we're now entering i sometimes i prefer the word the intelligence revolution um where where do you see this this sitting it's been right in the middle <laughs> to make it short right in the middle uh it's it's it, it is it is the equivalent uh of the machines that we used uh in the, during the agricultural revolution uh, and then the, the other machines that we used in the manufacturing sector a uh, hundred years ago uh, now we are on computers we are all working on computers in computerized environments. Um, those robots now are robots that are able to execute actions on our computers, sending emails, entering data, uh, clicking here and there. Those, um, we can call them robots. Huh? Robots are, are now intelligent. They are able to digest data, create insights, understand trends, help us in our decision making. They are able to talk, to understand. Uh, think of chatbots. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they are able to see and to and to read, to read for us, to see, to identify issues. Um, uh, again, the example of the X-ray, uh, where, 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 where intelligent automation capabilities help to identify tumors. So very, very... Um, I, I, used, I used to explain uh, intelligent automation like a combination of capabilities uh, to help reproduce what we as knowledge workers do when we work. Uh, and what we do is we talk with others, we understand what they say, we send them emails, we, we, we click on our computer, we enter the data, we manage data and, and workflows and information. Um, uh, and, and I, I like to talk about these four, those four capabilities. So one being execution, okay. Um, uh, the second being the language, with the capacity to to understand, talk. Um, uh, the 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 third one being the vision, with the capacity to read, for example, or to to identify uh, uh, discrepancies on images or on cameras on videos, and and the last one being thinking and learning which with the capacity to to create insights from data and to predict and help decision making very good and you, you touched on a number of technologies uh, already here what would you say are the the main technologies that are enabling intelligent automation and before you answer this i just want to want to have a look at the stream quickly francis saying hello from connecticut in the usa saying excellent discussion points um and steven is saying hello from lagos in Africa. Um, so go back to the conversation the the, the key technologies driving intelligent automation, what would you say they, they are? Maybe, maybe in order of importance. <laughs> I want to close your Skype down. <laughs> so so the, the yeah, I have I have uh, three kids at home, so <laughs> it's easy yeah. to manage with them. Um, we're all back from school. <laughs> and we all know it's it's time for 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 weekend now. Yeah, um, I've got to say, and, and everyone understands this nowadays. Working from home, I, I think one of the things that 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 we all experience is my kids regularly turning up in the background and not 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 realizing that I'm on a live stream or or interrupting. But this is, I I think makes 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 us more human. I think and more exactly. Human as well. exactly. Um, so the, the question was that the key technologies driving this in, uh, intelligent automation um, that, that you're talking about, what, what would you say are some of the key technologies? I'll, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to the four uh, capabilities. And for each of those capabilities, uh, there is a portfolio of technologies supporting them. 
Yeah. Uh, the, first of all, the vision capability provides computer with the ability to analyze images, recognize letters, objects, and view the environment. Uh, key technologies here is computer vision, okay, which is currently uh, mainly enabled by, by deep learning. Um, then we have the execution, the capacity um, to accomplish actions in a digital environment like typing, clicking, opening applications, sending emails. Uh, key technologies here are um, robotic process automation, mm. RPA, uh, smart flow, smart, uh, sorry, smart workflow platforms, low code platforms. Um, uh, regarding the language capability, we have um, uh, which is the, the capability that gives machine the ability to speak, write, uh, interact, uh, derive meaning basically from, from, from our language. Very the, good. The, I think this, this just answered Daniel's question here saying hello from New Hampshire. Um, can you comment on the role of, of NLP, which stands for natural language processing? Exactly. You've just exactly. done. Exactly. So key, key, key technology here is called natural language processing, NLP. Uh, which is nowadays mainly enabled by, by deep learning techniques. Um, and key technologies that we are currently that, that are currently leveraging NLP are intelligent chatbots, uh, sentiment analysis and, and more. Uh, when we get into the thinking and learning capability, which gives computer the, the ability to analyze, create insight, predict, and support decisions. Um, the key capabilities are uh, uh, big data management, uh, machine learning, um, data visualization. Okay, so that's what we have been, been through the, the key the key technologies supporting IA um, via the four main capabilities. Very good. And where, where would you see things like blockchain and 5G fitting in? Um, very important enablers, very, yeah. but, but it's a good point. They are extremely important. Um, uh, for me, I mean, both of them, huh? but for example, blockchain will bring a lot in, 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 while it's not an automation technology per se, it will bring a lot because it will avoid having to automate. Okay. Um, and let, let me explain here. Um, today, we, uh, we, we all have teams spending a lot of time reconciling data, authenticating documents, um, um, uh, verifying the identities. All this will be done naturally, um, uh, instant, instantaneously by, by blockchain. Okay, so, so there will be no need to, to make those actions anymore, and there will be no need to automate them anymore. So it's going to bring a lot, really a lot. Very good. Um, so do you have, what, what are you, some of your favorite examples? Um, we, we've talked a lot about the, the, what intelligent automation is. Let's, let's make it real for people. You've given lots of examples already in, in different sectors, but if you said, okay, this company is doing this and this is really amazing, this showcase is what, what um, IA can really deliver. What are some of those use cases that you would highlight? What are some of the, your favorite examples? Um, um, so when I when I talked about those four capabilities um, that are that are composing intelligent automation, the best way to use them is to combine them to be able to automate end-to-end -end processes. Mm. And let me take an example of an end-to-end -end processes, uh, an end-to-end -end process that every company in the world is using. We call it procure to pay, and I'm sure you it, it resonates for for everyone. Uh, which is the process that goes from selecting vendors, okay, when we, we every company, every commercial company in the world buys products, buy raw materials, or buys just pens and, and pencils for, for, their, for their employees. Uh, when, we, when we go about purchasing, purchasing those, those elements, first of all, we select the vendors. Here, machine learning can help to identify the best vendors, to, to identify the ones that make most sense based on, based on historical data or based on external data. It's then about sending orders to those vendors. Uh, here, you can use 
low-code platforms or robotic process automation to perform automatically the sending of emails. Uh, then it's about whenever you've received those goods, it's about paying them. So you're going to receive and process invoices coming from the vendors. And this, again, is can be done automatically through uh, intelligent automation by using uh, natural language processing and vision through optical character recognition, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when you've received those invoices, you need to pay them. But here again, you can automate this, uh, this payment uh, to the vendors using, for example, robotic process automation. So you see, it's really about connecting those different activities that are currently performed by employees and, and honestly, that are not uh, very interesting, not exciting for people, uh, getting them automated, each of them, and connecting them uh, through an end-to-end -end process. Um, um, an, another example that I, that I, that I like is, is in the, the health industry, in hospitals, for example, uh, being able, I mean, having, I mean, um, we've implemented for, for a hospital the capacity to uh, onboard online their, their patients, mm -hmm. um, connecting with them, collecting their documents, um, explaining them using an intelligent chatbot uh, which document they need, where they can find each information, how, how each information can be uploaded in the platform. Um, having then um, a, a process that helps to uh, understand the completeness of those documents, uh, which other information has re are required from those patients, um, and then helping them to schedule their 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 um, their discussions with the, with the doctors and and their meetings in the hospital, um, and then managing all 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 the processes until the invoice uh, is raised and the connection with the, with their insurance companies is done. Um, so it's really about in in this case the benefits of of automating such an end to end process is really freeing doctors from those transactional administrative activities uh, so that they can really focus on their patients, on, on, on the insights the families and, and the patients are expecting from them. So yeah. I gave two, two examples here. They're, they're, Another one that I, yeah. they're, they're great examples. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think especially the, the, the some mundane processes like order to pay, I think this is something that we, we waste companies waste so much valuable human time on doing mundane completely non-value adding activities and when, when all this information is out there you can now do automatic uh, or completely automated supplier onboarding you can, uh, the other day i i was invoicing a, a tech company one of the biggest companies in the world and i sent them my my invoice and then I had an email back saying, okay, this time as an exception, we will send this for scanning and processing. And you think, what sort of world are you living in that they want actually me to post an, <laughs> an invoice to them by post? Uh, sometimes it's shocking how, how um, what opportunities companies miss in terms of automating their, their processes. Yes, and, and, uh, and, the, and the current COVID-19 crisis is... Uh... Uh, is is really giving those companies hard time now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so to talking about obviously companies are embarking on this on their own journeys to automate their 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 business processes. What do they need to do to succeed with this? Because there are so many companies that are not doing this as well as they should. And what do you see as some of the biggest barriers when it comes to, to actually making this a reality? Is it about skills? Is it about technology? What would you say? So how do you make it work and what are the biggest barriers? It's, 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 um, it's a very important point, a very important question because um, so even though intelligent automation has been only coined three years ago, so it's a very recent field. Um, uh, according to Deloitte, more than 50% of the largest companies in the world are already using intellig intelligent automation in, in at least one of their divisions. Uh, 
What was the um, number? Fifty percent, five zero. But another an, an, another survey from McKinsey shows that only fifteen percent. So this time it's one five. Fifteen percent of the companies have been able to implement IA in more than three of their divisions or three of their their departments. Meaning, only fifteen percent of the companies have really been able to scale mm. automation. Okay, and that's that's really the the holy grail today is about scaling it. Mm. It's very easy to implement on a small scale, a proof of concept, a pilot. Mm. But when it is about uh, generating strong impact uh, through through scale in the organization, that's really more difficult. So if, and, if, if I was to ask you about examples of companies that you would think are doing this well, what sort of companies would you name that, that have been able to scale this a bit more before we go back into... Yeah, so so um, the the famous publicly known examples are uh, JP Morgan, Netflix, ADP, um, ANZ Bank. Those those are the 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 famous the the the, the companies that have been able to to renownedly uh, implement uh, IA uh, at scale. Very good. And and what makes them different? So what are the success factors that that you see? So we've so my co-authors and I have have worked on 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 that on that very important question. Um, and, and so we've we've done some research. So not only based on on our decades of experience in the field, but also um, connecting with more than two hundred IA practitioners in the world through mm. through surveys. Um, the outcome is five key components. Uh, the first one is all the companies that have succeeded their their um, their um, their journey in IA had two two fundamental points uh, achieved. The first one is they've always put people in the center of their IA transformation. So IA is built by people for people. I'm used to say without people there is no IA, but with IA there are still people. Okay, so there is uh, uh, change management, uh, education, training is 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 key. Mm. Uh, the the second, which is which is here as well, um, a, a, a foundation. Uh, start with a strong um, management support sponsorship. Okay, those transformation have. A strong impacts on the organization, the processes, uh, the systems, um, and very often they will require a large investment. So management has to be strongly involved in those in those transformations. Uh, capability building uh, is an important point as well in change management. So the third the third point that I want to mention is by combining the different technologies that I mentioned before. Uh, those companies have been able to automate complex end-to-end -end processes, and and really the same as the examples that I that I that I that I just mentioned before, the use cases that I shared before, they've been able to create synergies. The fourth point is about democratizing intelligent automation, mm -hmm. uh, opening the door of uh, being able to implement technology to all employees in a company. And through the use of uh, user-friendly um, drag-and-drop type technology that we call low-code platforms, for example, or some form of robotic process automation. Mm -hmm. uh, this really helps any business user in a company to implement their own automation that will help them in their day-to-day -day work. So they can really see the impact of of, of the technology on their work, improving their work. Um, and, and, and beyond the addition of workforce that, that it helps to bring, because the more we are implementing a technology, the faster we will go. Uh, on top of this, it really helps to change the mindset in a company, because when everyone is participating in the transformation, the ownership of the transformation by everyone in the company is, is really stronger. And, and this really helps to to change the mindset, change the culture of the company to more digitalization 
and, and automation. Yeah, and I, I agree. For, for me, it's putting the people in the business in the driver's seat, in the driving seat, to make sure automation is not done to them, but they are in control, they are driving it. Exactly, exactly. So in, in you mentioned competencies and skills and capabilities. What would you say are some of the biggest skills? So anyone listening, listening to this now saying, I, I want to think about my own business, I think about my own job and my own future career. What are the kind of jobs, job skills that that you will need to succeed uh, in this new uh, intelligent automation world? A very, very important point, um, and and indeed, it's it concerns all of us. And then we all have to think about about this 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 question for for ourselves, um, and for our teams, and for our kids. Um, um, I think it's about understanding uh, where where are people's competitive edge compared to to machines, okay, to compared to to technology, uh, and and it's really about understand and, and and it's really about focusing on this. In in our research, based on our research, the those skills that technology will never be able to. To reproduce, uh, and so where technology will never be able to help us, and where we are then the only one on the on the driving seat. Uh, those are first of all creativity, secondly um, relationship connection with the others. Mm. Thirdly, we all agree that the pace of the change will be ever and ever fast. Uh, our, um, I mean, technologies are evolving extremely, extremely fastly. Okay, uh, one of the key skill of the future is adaptability, and and we call it learning how to learn. Okay, those are those are the four the, the four key key elements that we think, and, and that's that's part of the fourth part of the of the book. Um, our education. Uh, um, a system should focus on because these those are really our competitive advantages compared to technology and this is really where we are the best complementary complete complementar with with technology yeah i again completely agree with you and uh, and and for me it's really important that education organizations are starting to rethink how they are delivering education because the, the system i'm seeing is is 50 years out of date now so we need to spend more time focusing on real problem solving on creativity and and the, complex decision making things like um critical thinking is absolutely important and hu building human relationships absolutely and 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 exactly and we need to we need to really think about what makes us human and um I had a conversation the other day when with all of this automation sometimes we only think about automating using chatbots to deliver all our customer service experience actually having a human in the loop is so vitally important for so many different issues because if if i can actually speak to real humans solving my complex problems someone that has some empathy and understanding of of what i'm going through this is so much more valuable than saving a bit of money and and companies that will really understand where to automate and where not will be the ones that succeed in the future that's my view I fully, fully, fully agree with you. And and uh, I like uh, to come back on this example of the chatbot. I like um, to 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 explain CEOs that uh, the best practice in implementing such 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 technology is to be very transparent with clients. Con uh, the chatbot starting the conversation with clients, telling them, "I'm a robot. I'm a chatbot. I'm here to help you and try to serve you 24/7, what you you never had before." Um, yeah. Unfortunately, I won't be able to answer all your questions. Um, so if any time I can't answer, I will just log your point and someone will call you back tomorrow morning at office time so that so that we can solve your issue and, and, and satisfy your point. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's really showing the, the complementarity of, of people and technology working together for, 
for the best of exactly. A chat chatbot can ne never be empathetic with us. They can never really feel a, a human concern and 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 react to this appropriately. Um, Seamus is asking, saying here is, is he says thank you very much for organizing this session. As always, one wonderful conversation. But Pascal, uh, while I entirely agree with you that intelligent automation has massive upsides. Surely we cannot ignore the downsides. So what would you say are some of the, the, the downsides that we have to manage carefully? How would you answer Seamus's question? Yeah, that's that's a, that's that's a very important point. We need we need to mention them and we need to, to take care of them. Okay. Um, we we in, in in the last part of the book, we've we've identified those those imperatives that we need to get right in order to make sure that intelligent automation has the most positive aspects, and the most positive impact on our society. Um, we've talked about education right now. Uh, that's very important to adapt education. Second point is about wealth equality. Okay, um, economists uh, over the last decades. Uh, have identified that the use of technology has increased uh, wealth inequality amongst the people. Um, and 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 going going down the line in the future, it's gonna only it will only increase. And and it's not we, we I mean I can't think of a world where only a few of us would progress uh, ahead and 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 leave behind a lot of people. So we need we need this progress to be all together, um, and we need so to think about uh, to remedy to see, to this to think of implementing wealth sharing mechanisms, for example, um, universal basic income is one of them, but there are many 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 other ways to think of of sharing better uh, the new wealth created by by those technology. Uh, Absolutely. And so another one is of course. I mean, uh, the, the impact on employment that needs to be managed and monitored very closely. Um, and, and, and here there are different different um, uh, school, schools of thoughts. Um, uh, if, 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 we, if we have a look in the past to what happened in the previous industrial revolutions, uh, the optimist scenario is that IA will enable to create more jobs than, than we have today. And this is what happened in the past, okay? The previous uh, 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 industrial revolutions have created more jobs. Uh, and, and we even didn't know what they were before they came, okay? And, 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 and I, I used to say, who 10 years ago, to, to illustrate that point, 10 years ago, uh, who would know that our world would count today more than three million Uber drivers. No one, no one need know about this. It's okay. So new jobs will come, new job activities, new new work activities will be created by technology. But it's very difficult for us humans to understand to to imagine what they will be. Okay, and that's one school of thoughts. The other school is is I would say more by researchers. Uh, they, and and what they say is. The pace is different this time. It's very different. The, the nature of the automation is different. We, we used to automate motor activities. Now it's intelligent activities. So it's, it's very different. And there, there might have some impact, some strong impact on, on the employment. Um, basically, what we say in the book is we have to monitor this very closely, the impact, the, the trends of, 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 of the impact of intelligent automation on employment. And we have right now to think of, to, to, to basically get prepared to deal with both scenarios. And, and, and um, we believe that the actual scenario will be a hybrid between both, but we need to be prepared for both scenarios. Um, and, we, and we owe this to, to our children, to the future generations. We don't want in 20 years to tell them, we knew this could have happened, but we haven't we haven't done anything because we we thought the other scenario would be more likely no we need we need to think of those two scenarios right right now and think of what we can do to to, to remedy to them so and and we 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 bring in the book a list of things that need to be done to mitigate the risks 
brought by both scenarios. Yeah, and 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 again, I I completely agree. And I working with companies every day, I experience those conversations firsthand. And I my my pendulum swings one way or the other most days, where you you see one study and you think actually that it creates an amazing amount of of new jobs. Eighty uh, percent of jobs we will have in twenty years time have not been invented yet. Um, and and you think, hey, this people are have always been scared. If you look look at the laddards that smashed up the cotton mills um, in during the previous industrial revolutions, they ended up having much better jobs, um, better standard of living. At the same time, you think, hey, you just said three million Uber drivers. That's all well and good, but we also have self driving cars coming along. So this is a job that we probably will not have in the long run. Mm-hmm. And has been a, a, a truck driver for 27 years. How are you going to retrain those people to work in technology? How do you really help them to leverage some of the more human skills like creativity, relationships, and so on that we need? So there's a huge challenge there, I think. A, a, a very interesting insight from, from, um, from, from our research uh, is that uh, out of the scope of the current work that we do, uh, 30% can be augmented. 30% can be eliminated. Okay, and when I say eliminated, it's, it's unproductive work, unproductive emails, meetings. Okay, uh, and 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 the last third of it can be um, uh, can be automated. Okay, so one third automated, and this will be automated through intelligent automation. One third can be eliminated. And this, again, here, technology, intelligent automation can help to identify and and coach us in our day-to-day work where we are losing time with excessive emails, excessive meetings, excessive, and so on, unproductive aspect of our work. And uh, and the, so the, the, the other 30% is about, it's about the, those activities that can be augmented, where intelligent automation here help us to be to be superhumans, as I explained before. Uh, so this means, out of this, out of, out of this, this research, it means that only thirty percent of the work that we are doing today is really value add work that we human should be doing. Does it mean that in the future we might have less work to perform? Okay. Does it mean that instead of working eight hours per day, we would we would work maybe three hours per day? And then the, the question comes, then what would we do with the rest of our time? And, and, and uh, the perspective that we bring in the book is thinking of a, of a world where we would work less, we would still keep the same amount, uh, uh, still earn the same amount of money thanks to wealth sharing mechanisms that we discussed before. But we would have more time. We would have more time to be more human, basically, to do to do what what we really what we we really like to do, what what really um, passionates us, what and and what is also the most important in our lives, and what is, in my view, the most important in in our lives as humans is our families, love, taking care of of the others, uh, our planet, taking care of our planet. So. So if we get to that point, it would mean that really intelligent automation would help us to, 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 to build a more human society, a more human world. Yeah, and, and this is this is exactly what I the, the point I'm always making that that my hope is that it will free us up to do the things that really matter to us and that matter to humanity. And at the moment, because we spend so much time at work. Um, we miss out on our kids. We miss out on spending time with our elderly parents. We and we miss out on time um, furthering our own education. We miss out on time actually m- inventing new things because everyone is so busy that that we we don't do this. And I was having a conversation with the healthcare system here in the with the, the NHS. In, in the UK. And for example, one of the jobs that can now be very easily automated is a radiologist, so someone that interprets scans in hospitals. Um, but we still need them. 
and hopefully a future job won't be sitting eight hours looking at scans. It will be spending time um, doing research to make this this whole field even better. They will spend more time working with patients on customized treatment plans and so on, where we really as humans add value. So I, I completely agree. And there was an interesting comment just now by Oliver saying, we'll mainly automate low cost jobs. I don't actually see this. What I'm seeing is that the, the jobs that are currently being automated are the, the high cost jobs because this is where companies uh, get the most benefits from and actually jobs like medics like radiologists like lawyers like accountants they are the jobs or the professions that are very fast being automated what's your view on that pascal yeah um, uh, i'm completely aligned with you <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this 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 hour is racing away with us. I we we need to do a a, a number a, a second session here of of this at some point in the future. But before I let you go and um, have a well deserved glass of wine um, on a Friday night, um, what would be what would you say are some of your what would you say are your predictions? How is uh, intelligent automation going to change our society what's going to be some of the what impact will it have over the next let's say five to ten years what, what do you see there you know my, my predictions have have changed a lot with with the current situation that we are living with with the covid mm. um, uh, again um Covid definitely is bringing a lot of bad to our world, but the little good that will that it will that it is bringing today is is maybe this that that all of us are um, reflecting and recognizing that we need to be more digitalized, we need to be more automated. We are all also reflecting on the fact that um, that the work we are doing today might not be. We are not. We might not doing it the right way, um, uh, and that we can do it from our home. We can be closer to our families. Um, so, so I think a lot of things are really evolving quickly. And and uh, so I would say my dream would be that uh, intelligent automation would be implemented at scale in more companies. Would be uh, would be used. Um, to increase the resilience of our health system in general and our economy in general, and that and that um, and back to the to the last point we discussed, uh, helping us to to refocus on what really makes us human, uh, what passionates us, and 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 um, get us closer to to the the reason why we are living, the reason why we are on Earth, which is which is about. Um, taking advantage of, of our great planet, taking care of it and taking care of, of our families and, and of the others. Great, what a wonderful uh, point to end on. Thank you so much, Pascal. Thank you so much for all of you for tuning in on a Friday. I hope you enjoyed the session. As always, I'm really interested to hear your feedback. So let us know in the comments uh, what you think. Uh, was this interesting? Was this useful? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Just let us know all your thoughts. Um, as I said, if you're a listener, if, if you you can always listen to to these conversations on a replay on my YouTube channel. And if you're listening on there now, make sure you subscribe. And you can also listen uh, to all these conversations on my podcast if this is what you uh, prefer. What, what you prefer. Thank you very much. You all stay safe and have a lovely weekend. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Donna.